All right, so today we're going to continue on what we were going over yesterday. We're going to create a new small little, small dummy little React app just to kind of show like just the power of React. So I've cloned down mute button, which is a which is inside of your curriculum for today. And all I've got, if you take a look inside of here, is just node modules with nothing inside of it and small little icons that look like this. Reveal and Finder. It's just a little icon that, oh, why is this not showing up the way I want? I don't know if you can kind of see it. It's just a little thing that, like the sound for like off and the sound for on. Like, so I have an off and on, like it's like just the, no, can I make this a little bigger? I don't know how to make it bigger. You'll see it in just a second. It's just an image, that's all, that's all it is. Um, so if we take a look at the readme inside of here, basically all we want to do uh, just to summarize it, we're trying to toggle between two different images on the page based on a user clicking on the page. And those images can be found here inside of the icons folder. So we CD inside of here. We have just the readme, the icons, and the node modules. I'm going to remove the node modules for now. There's nothing inside of there. I'm going to run create react app. Um, I'll just do app for now. I'll just name this app. So again, React, this Create React app is similar to Rails, new, whatever your project name is. It generates an entirely new Rails project. Here, we have Create React app. It creates an entirely new React app for us. Now, React has much more stuff going on. There's a lot more things that it is installing. Because so much of the, because it's all in JavaScript, it's bringing all of the necessities that so your browser can handle most of the load. With Rails, all of this stuff is happening on the back end, on the server side. Um, and you know, all you can kind of imagine, let's say we have 1 billion users on the planet today who, are, who want to use your website. If 1 billion people hit your website and you can handle it, that's great. But as more people are going to get online, you know, third world countries are getting phones and, and broadband and things of that nature, um, there might be two, three, four billion people. So like four times the amount of traffic. If that, if unless you have like unlimited money and unlimited space to continuously keep up with that load, you're not going to be able to keep up for very long. If things are going to slow down, your users are going to complain, and they're eventually going to go away from your website. So the idea is I don't want one central point of failure, like your server being one central point of failure. I want to distribute the load as much as I can to the users who are actually using my site. Because this Google Chrome here is actually very, very powerful. It makes requests for you. It gets responses. It loads everything out on this page. And it can keep it, keep track of you know cookies. It can keep track of sessions. It can keep track of when you're logged in. It sends, you know, it takes care of quite a bit of of stuff for you. It also can keep track of all of your all of the JavaScript libraries directly inside of your browser. So let's take a look at what we've got. So we list everything here. Uh, I'm going to move all of the contents from app inside of here. This current thing called mute button, except for README. So I'm just going to open up everything really fast. And I'm just going to copy over these, move these over, and I'm going to delete the original thing. So again, I just created a random React app, and I just copied all of its contents inside of here. So app is gone, but I've moved all of the contents inside of here at this point. So I'm going to run npm install. It's kind of like bundle install. So I'm installing all the packages that I may or may not need. So while this is going, let's see where let's, let's see what we've got. So we have this .github. This is just for us to, you know, to have the, all the pull request stuff, so that when you open pull requests, you have that little template. The icons that we were talking about a little bit earlier. We have all of these node modules, and these node modules are just all the JavaScript that you're that you will particularly need in order to run a React app. This is all loaded into your browser, and your browser keeps track of all of this JavaScript code. We have public, which are the things that show up. So we have the little fav icon that shows up in the top left-hand corner of every single page. So GitHub has this tiny little cat, octocat um, fav icon. You have the index.html, which is like the index page that's loaded up first, and manifest of what's going on inside of here. The main meat of everything will happen inside of source. So let's open up app.js, because this is our entry point. 
Now you may take a look and see like some of these colors don't look right to me. Like why is all of this green? Why is it not like highlighted with like some purple and some reds and things of that nature? And if you take a look on the bottom right hand corner, it just says that the formatting and the highlighting is just using JavaScript. Now JavaScript is fine, but we still have, we have HTML code and JavaScript is trying to highlight properly even when it sees, sees HTML code. So I'm gonna do Shift Command P or I can just click down here. So I'm gonna do Shift Command P and I'm gonna set the syntax to Babel's version of JavaScript. Babel will forward and backwards compile for you and it'll, it basically gives you the right color highlighting. So I'm just gonna click on this. You can kind of see this looks a little bit better. There's my, there's the, uh, the right colors that I'm looking for. So let's see, is this finished? All right, so we have npm install, everything looks good. We're just gonna run npm start. That starts up our server and it gives us two URLs. The first one is gonna be 127001. So it gives you 12701 or localhost. So I can go to the localhost 3000, or as long as, you know, if you're here in Chicago with us and you go on the CP network, you can actually hit my particular app as it runs right now by going to 10.03.155 port 3000. Let's see if this is running. All right, so this is our boilerplate welcome to React. You have the little React logo and we can change a few things. So the first thing is I'm going to change just to get a small win in my book. I'm going to change welcome to react to mute button challenge. It automatically refreshes for me and now I have mute button challenge. Now I'm going to every single react component has render, which has a return. This is what's showing up on the screen. Every single component most of the time should also have what's called a constructor or an initialize. It receives props, properties, um, this the same thing as Ra in Rails called parameters. So I'm going to super props, this always comes first, and I'm going to set my state. This.state equals some hash. For me, I so our goal for this particular app is I'm going to show something, uh, I'm going to show an image on the screen. When I click on it, it's going to flip to the other one and go back and forth. How would I represent that kind of I don't know, how would I represent that state inside of this hash? So it's like I click it, it turns to one thing. I click it again, it goes to another thing. What would you, what would you think I, I should call my property? Yeah, we can just do is muted and we can, we'll set it false. We'll just start it as false. All right, next, we're gonna create a function called toggle mute that we'll have onto an event handler. So let's see, did I forget anything? I did not. I'm gonna create a quick, now I'm gonna need a toggle mute. Remember toggle mute, because you're creating a custom event handler, something that you wrote yourself, you throw an underscore in the front. It's just for, just for readability purposes, throwing the underscore in the front means that other people knew that you wrote this code instead. So inside of here, I'm going to do this dot set state. I start off with the state being is muted. And every single time I click on like this particular thing, I'm going to hit this toggle mute. I'm going to set the state to is muted, is muted to the opposite of this dot state dot is muted. I could obviously do like it and if else check, which is like if this dot state that is muted is equal to false, then change this dot set state. And you, you kind of know where I'm going with this. Um, like that and I know there's no ends but <coughs> you get the idea I could I could have just as easily done this like if else kind of kind of logic 
but I figure this, this will cover everything. So I'm going to set the state to the opposite of whatever um, this.state.isMuted is. So if it's true, it's automatically going to do the opposite because of this bang here. Um, so you could do either one, you could do an if else, or you can just do the opposite by putting the bang in the front. All right, so I'm going to console log this dot state to get myself started. And I'm going to create myself something down over here. We'll get rid of all this perhaps. Add this bit of code in there. So again, let's start over. I have a app component, and right away I have I set the state to is muted as false because I need to keep track of did the person click it, did the person not click it. So I have a a small little thing that says is muted, and it's going to be false. Whenever I'm at this point, I'm going to have an on click that has just the word test that shows up on the page. Whenever a user clicks this. I'm going to hit this toggle mute. The toggle mute is going to set the state of is muted to the opposite of whatever it is right now. Now, if you take a look, at going back to that binding of this and like, what is this? It's ambiguous. When we talk about this, or when we do this.state on line 20 and here at the early parts of line 23, this is not ambiguous because render is only, render is in every single, cla every single class component. I know that when I do this, it's within the context of render, which is under this particular class app. However, when I click on this, um, if you take a look here, the this is a custom method. Because it's a custom method, the this becomes ambiguous. You don't know really what context you're in. So I need to bind this, the context of the app, to this particular toggle mute. It's similar to like, it's similar to that to the time that I, I got I was fortunate enough to go to Eric Lakovsky's box at the United Center. I was eating popcorn and I asked because I was in the box, I was in the context of the box. They said, I said, Can I get some popcorn? They said, Of course, sir, let me get that for you right away. And then I decided I wanted to go, like everyone wanted to go like go down to the regular stands during during intermission. And then I asked somebody, Can I get popcorn? They said, Sure, that'll be eight dollars. You know, so the context has changed. Like even though I am still, I, I was somebody else's guest, I was able to ask for popcorn in one context. When I changed context, they didn't know that I was part of that box. So I just showed them my ticket and they said, of course, sir, here's you know your free popcorn or whatever. So I have this show up on the screen. It just says test on here. And you can kind of see that I've console logged this.state. So I just have is muted is equal to false. When I click on the word test, it's going to fire off this dot toggle mute and switch the state. Let's see. If I click this, it says is muted is true. I click it again. It says is muted is false. True, false, true, false, true, false. I'm going to pause real quick and see are there any questions on anything? I'm going to have Danny explain this all back to me. <coughs> Danny, explain. Start from line five and go all the way down. I really don't know how to. Okay, Raymond, start at line five and then go all the way down. <sighs> so the uh, class app is our object. Okay. And we're going to initialize the constructor sure. box being Ruby params. Yep. And uh, we're going to start off with super uh, props. What does this mean? So we're going to uh, take in from component their property. Their yep. Components. Yep. So basically, I'm, I'm, I'm passing it all the way up to component, OK? And then we're going to set, or not set, we're going to, um, we're going to, I guess, initialize our state yep. as uh, is muted, uh, started with false. Sure. What is, what is state? State is like the state of the object. Kind of, you can just think of state as more or less like params, like the hash that you had when you were working with controllers. State is just a hash that lives on each individual component, full of stuff that you may or may not need. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and then let's jump down to render. 
And then in render, uh, we're console logging the state. Okay. And then we're gonna uh, print uh, HTML. Okay. Along with uh, some JavaScript or JSX. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we're at, we have a event handler on click. Mm -hmm. What's an event handler? Event handler is uh, is uh, an action either click on change or key down. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's something that the user is doing. Okay. Something that the user is doing that's going to fire off a function. Okay. And in this case, our function is toggle mute. Mm -hmm. And it's going <coughs> to set this, the current state, which is, is muted false to the opposite. Okay. Will be true. Okay. What are these curly braces around this dot toggle mute? That's that's the uh, JSX yep. the embedded JavaScript. Yeah, just like when we were embedding Ruby, we had to do percentage, like some some Ruby code would go inside of here. Um, similarly, in, in JSX, we just need the curly braces to say this is something that we're executing. Now, can you explain to me the binding of this? So the binding of this, uh, the purpose is that when it hits uh, toggle mute, it doesn't know what this is, so uh, we bind this to uh, refer to the context of the app, of the uh, app's current state. Mm -hmm. cool. All right, that's pretty much it. How come after this that set state, you have parentheses? Does that mean that it's JSX, and then you have the brackets because it's JavaScript in JSX? All right, so can you ask me that one more time? What's page? <laughs> After uh, this that set state, yeah, you have parentheses, mm -hmm. and is that the parentheses because this is JSX? No, no. So the the JSX. So inside of render, you'll see inside of render, there's always going to be a return. The return is what gets printed out to the screen. So the return opening parentheses, closing parentheses. This is saying this is what I want you to return out to the screen. So you you see that you have some HTML code here. And then these particular curly braces on 23, this one right here, and the corresponding closing one here is JSX saying like, this is embedded JavaScript. This is, this is the JavaScript code that needs to be executed. Similarly, if I were to do this in, in like embedded Ruby, it would look something like that. If you take a look up here, this is just the syntax for how to set the state. It's just saying, um, you need to actually pass in like what you're changing inside of a hash. That's all. All right, so let's create a component to actually handle the mute button. So similar to similarly to Rails, if you have a bunch of the same thing, like all like if you have a bunch of models, if you have a bunch of controllers used in service objects, then you want it to have its own separate folder. For us, we're going to create sep a separate components folder under source. I'm going to create a new folder inside of here called mute button. And inside of mute button, I will have a mute button <laughs> .js. Bless you. Now you may be wondering, John, like why am I creating a why am I creating a folder if I'm just going to create like just a regular file underneath? Why do I need to have the folder? Can't I just have mute button.js? The answer is yeah, you definitely can. But inside of like before when we had test files, we had them all under like a spec folder down here at, towards the bottom. In, for, if you write a component like mute button.js, I'm next going to create a uh, mute button you mute button test.js, and it's all going to be nested underneath this one folder. It's just a slightly different way of organizing things. I'm going to split the screen in two. Just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to just copy this code in. And change the pylang to Babel, and then it fixes everything up. So let's see what we've got here. So on line one, we're importing the React library, specifically the component library from the React node module somewhere inside of here. So I have a mute button, which inherits from React component. I'm going to, I don't have an initialize because I guess I don't need to initialize with anything. I'm going to just render something out to the screen. 
So I say, if this stop props is, is muted is equal to true, I'm going to return a div that just says on. Otherwise, I'm just going to return off to the screen. Once it hits the first return, it stops. Like similarly to just your, out, your JavaScript algorithms, if something evaluates the true, I'm just going to return and then I'm done. So if this never hits, then I will return off out to the screen. From there, I'm going to, since I moved all of my, basically all of the code from here into the mute button, I'm going to import mute button from components mute button. Let's see, what do I need to do? Let's get rid of this here. I don't need this anymore. I'm just going to do mute button. And I'm going to pass in the props of is muted equals this dot state dot is muted. So again, I move the code that used to live here. Let me, let me just copy this real quick. I move the code, which was basically like um, it's just showing something on the screen. I moved it away from everything living here on app.js. And instead, I have the entire mute button component uh, in its place. Now, when you when we used to create new classes, like if we had a class person, we had like a definitionalize or something like that. We we took in we took in some arguments like a name or something like that. We did a equals like person dot new with John or something. This is how we used to initialize things inside of Rails. When we try to initialize new components, it looks a little something like this. So I'm going to create my, I'm going to create, render this component out by doing new button, but instead of doing like dot new, I just pass in the, I pass in the parameters directly inside of here. Can't you just uh, transfer over the, the states or the initialized state and also the toggle mute? In the other components. We can. Um, I'll get there in just a second. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> so if you go back over here, you'll see that all it says is off. I'm going to open up my console, and we lost everything. Like nothing is working at this particular point. And just like Raymond said, like can't we just move most of the code from app.js and just have it live inside of mute button instead? Yeah, I think so. So. First things first, you can kind of see that mute button, which is just passing in is muted to um, to the current state, which is false. So it reads, so again, when I first load up my app, uh, the app state has muted as false. And then I'm rendering out a mute button out to the screen. Mute has a property, this.props, of is muted to be the value of this dot state that is muted. So the first time through, it's going to be false. So if you take a look inside the code here, it says if this dot props that is muted, so it's looking for properties. So it's, the properties are called is muted, is true. I'm going to return on. Otherwise, I'm going to return this div that says off. That's why you, right now you see this word that says off. And no matter what I do to it right now, it's not changing because this dot props that is muted is always going to be false. So we need to pass in this toggle mute, like because I want to keep track of like if I'm clicking it, I actually want to you know do what it says. So inside of app.js, I'm going to pass in another property called toggle mute. Be this dot toggle mute. Find this. At this point, oh, did I mess up something. Oh, I forgot to close them curly. At this particular point, the this, you're starting to see a little bit more of like why we have that. So if you take, if I'm passing down toggle mute into mute button, the context of this becomes mute button. Because when I'm calling it, I call it inside of mute button. But I actually want to use the this of the app. This has to equal app rather than mute button. So with that, like that's why we need to bind to this. So I'm going to alter this mute button code just a little bit. All I'm going to do is do a div, the on click, 
I will do this for both of them. All right, so on my screen, I have a mute button. The mute button is, is basically just going to render out some, like the words on or off to the screen. Mute button has properties that are passed in. One of those properties is called is muted. It's going to just be true or false. The first time through, it's passed as false. So that's why we see off on the screen. When I click on the on or the off button, I want it to toggle the mute. But the toggle mute doesn't live here on the mute button. It lives here on the app.js. So what I'm doing over here is I'm passing down the toggle mute from app.js into mute button. So whenever I click on this, whenever I click on something inside of mute button, it actually feeds all the way back up to this toggle mute and changes apps at the app state rather than the mute state. Let's just kind of see this in action. So if all goes well, I should be able to click on off and it should turn to on. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Our final step, so since we're able, we have a separate, we have two components now. One is called app and one is called mute button. I'm able to like kind of toggle between on and off. Um, and I think I can just change the, this word from on and off to the, uh, the little logos inside of icons. So I'm going to import those logos in. So I'm going to import on icon. Um, I think it's, I have to, so here I have to go out one level out another level, out another level, go into icons, and then off. So out one level, out another level, out another level. One, two, three icons, and I think it's uh, on.svg. And similarly, it's gonna, I'm going to have one for off. So instead of the words showing up here, I'm going to have just what's called an image source is going to be on icon. And I'm going to have an off icon. I messed this up. Here we go. Let's see. It says module not found. You tried to go. Maybe I went a little bit too far. Maybe I'll get rid of one. It knows what it is from there. I'm just basically bringing in another file. Like so, I'm importing. I'm say I'm saying like I'm going to import everything. It's just I'm and I'm going to save it inside of this particular file as something I call on icon. So remember when you used to, you can uh, you said I can import mute button from components mute button that's this mute button down over here. Similarly, I have these little icons inside of here, and those little icons I'm going to save as on icon and off icon. I can call this poop and pee if I want to, wanted to. You can call this whatever you'd like. But I'm just saying I'm importing some other thing. I'm going to name it as these two particular variables, and this is the location I'm getting them from. So let's see if this shows up to the screen. Failed to compile, module not found. Um, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to move. Everything needs to live inside of source, so I need to move icons inside of source. So let me just open this really fast. Move this inside of source. Run npm start again. All right, there we go. So we, we start off with it being false, right? So when it's false, we have this 
no good icon that shows up. When I click it, it's going to set the state to true, and then it changes the image to a, a new image that looks like this, the sound icon is on. So on, off, on, off, on, off. And if I open up my console, you can kind of see that happening as well. So I'm going to just, I have is muted to true. So I'm gonna just click is muted false. And that's what shows up here, that little line through the, through the sound icon is muted true. And that, that slash goes away. I'm switching between two different photos based on the state of the app. And you can kind of see the speed that it's changing is instantaneous because I'm not actually making requests to the server. JavaScript in my browser are handling everything in real time here, giving the illusion that everything is happening in real time. Oh, it is happening in real time. All right, I'm going to open it up for questions because I am sure that I've lost everyone at this point because React is very, very challenging. So if you feel like you know, John is just speaking a different language at this point. I, I understood things before and I don't understand things now. Java, React has a very high learning curve. Everyone will tell you that. This one, this this seemingly simple um, exercise, you know, took me, you know, like a week to fully understand. So you may be understanding some of this React stuff like next week, and that's totally okay. Your brain might just be like, I'm not going to take any more information at this point. And that, that, that's a totally legitimate place to be. But I want to I want to stop for a second and just see if there are any questions. So, uh, instead of pass, instead of binding this and passing in props back and forth, mm -hmm. could you have just cut and paste the code from the toggle mute? Cut and paste that into the, the mute button class? Let's find out. Like with, uh, with also the state also, in, uh, the new button class, the this that state. Yeah. So you have to you have to ask yourself like, do you want which? So like like we said, state is a hash or a JavaScript object that lives on each individual component. Do you want the state to live on the entire app level, or do you want the state to live on the mute button? Right. So my, the, I think the thought behind this particular one, the answer to your question is yes. I can just as easily move everything from app and put it inside of mute button. At this point, mute button is in charge of the state of whether or not it is muted or not. But you have, to, I think the idea behind this is app wants to like the is muted is a very important thing as part of an app. Like the app needs to know like, are you logged in or logged out? That's you know, it's like I can have a separate components like sign in and sign out. Uh, and then that can keep track of whether or not you are logged in or logged out. But I think the app needs to know whether or not you're logged in or logged out. Yeah, because I just remember uh, when you did the like 100 button clickers, mm -hmm. uh, you did it the opposite way. You had it all in one. Yeah. Um, I could see if there's like a video, video object, then you would need the app will need to know that the mute state. So. Yes, yeah, that, that's kind of like that. If you had, it's it's yeah. So the yes, <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I I think the biggest part where I think everyone was okay. It seems until we reach this mute button and we're passing in properties. I think that's where people's eyes glazed over. So I want to review that one more time, real quick. Or I'll just review everything again. So I have two, two components. One's called app, and one's called mute button. And you can kind of think of, um, look, if you just go to like reddit.com or something like that, I don't really go to Reddit that often. If you look on this particular page, you might think like, think of this not as one giant page, but think of this as individual components that live on one page. Like one page is full, filled with components. Uh, so you can kind of like, what are some components that you might have? So you might have a nav bar component. A nav bar component might be in charge of seeing like, are you logged in or are you logged out? Or maybe it passes it all the way back up to the top of the app. Is this person logged in or logged out? Maybe that'll determine what I, what, um, what they see. There might be this, um, this little component, this might, this thing right, right here might be a component. 
And this is definitely a component down over here. So these are all like article teasers of like things that you can read. They have different components for um, like comments and different components for like, these are probably separate components. When I click on like new or rising or controversial or something like that, let's not do controversial, let's go to new. Reddit use React? I don't know. Let's find out. What websites use React? Facebook partially, Instagram completely. Okay, let's go to, let's just go to Instagram. Do I have an Instagram? Instagram.com. What else uses it? What websites use React? me am I, am I a person uh let's go to the despacito guy okay so we have despacito man what's that it's not just, it's not just a beaver <laughs> all right so despacito guy you can again think of this entire web page as not one giant web page but a page made up of small components so instagram is owned by facebook and instagram is a hundred percent written in react so what do you think some of the components are? So we probably have like a, like a header component that just loads up at the very top of each page. We probably have, like these are already, like if you go to every single Instagram page, there are three, it's, it's a three by whatever, however long your page is. It's already formatted there. In the background, it's making API requests to get small little, little teasers and then loading it up over here. Now you may be wondering, like, how how are they able to get this so fast? When I hover over, you know, this particular face of Fonsi, um, you can see that he has 49, 47,000 hearts and two hundred seventy nine comments. Basically, what's happening is they're loading all of that information in under props, and then passing it in over here. So you have you have a um, you have this picture that just shows up, and it's the event is probably like on hover. So whenever they detect, JavaScript detects that you're hovering over Fonzie's face on this particular picture, it will kind of gray out a little bit and make this in white, in white print, the, like the number of um, likes and the number of comments that are also on it. And when I, when I go away from it, it goes back to normal. It re resets the state. So this individual thing is keeping track of its state. Did you hover or did you not hover? App cannot keep track of all of this stuff because you don't need app to take care of everything. You need this individual um, picture component to keep track of the, its own state. So at this point, am I hovering? Yes. So at the moment I hover, it probably uh, changes the state to like grayed out or something like that. And then it keeps track of how many likes and like comments there are. When I hover over somebody else, the same thing applies at that particular point. Um, let's see. So similarly, when we take a look at our own very, uh, our, our mute button, we have two components. One's called an app, one's called a mute button. So when we go back to our local host 3000, the entire thing is app right now. And there is one component on there called mute button. Mute button needs to know about a few properties that you're passing down. This is where that constructor comes into play. By default, it will like have all of this stuff so you don't actually need to type it unless you want to do stuff, some, something fancy with state. Again, if I did not need to do anything with state, there's an, it's inherently there. You don't need to have this constructor props inside of there. I usually just put it in there uh, just for my, for, my, for my own sake. So there is an inherent constructor here that has props and supers the props back up. It has, I have access to props like before when I was doing things in Rails, I had access to the parameters by doing at whatever equals something. Similarly here, all of the parameters that are passed in are saved into this dot props, which is another hash that's available here. Mute button has is muted as a prop and toggle mute as a prop. Is muted is equal to, I'm, in, I'm executing this JavaScript, this dot state dot is muted, which starts off as false. It also has another to another thing called toggle mute. Toggle mute is a property that they're passing down. I can call this whatever I want. I can call this poop. 
And at this point, I'm going to toggle, instead of toggle mute, I'm just going to do this stop props stop poop. I can pass it in however I wish. Um, and the value of that is this dot toggle mute dot bind this, which is all of this stuff over here. So what I have on the mute button is whenever somebody clicks on the on icon or the off icon, this on click handler is, is fired off. When it's fired off, I, it, it looks for this dot prop stop poop. This dot prop stop poop doesn't exist over here, but the value of it is this dot toggle mute bind this. And that's what's setting the state and going back and forth. Yeah. I'm going to change this back to another click. Your this that state, are you always going to assign it in uh, object form? Yes. The question was, is this that state always going to be a JavaScript object? It's always going to be a JavaScript object. So is, is super passing up or receiving? I think it's. I think it is receiving from up. Yeah. And then, so if you didn't have line eight super, then you wouldn't be able to use props. I wouldn't be able to use props from, so I'm, I'm passing props from app to mute button. I think we're all on the same page with that right over here. I'm passing it in to, I'm pa passing in two properties, is muted and handle click. If I didn't have super props, like and I just got rid of this altogether. I had a constructor with props that didn't super it. Mute button would not be able to grab all the stuff that's being handed down. Every time you render, are you are you appending something to the DOM? Every time that I render, am I appending something to the DOM? Um, yes, most of the time. So render means like something's coming out to the page. Specifically, what's coming out to page is the thing that follows return. So over here, we have render. We can do whatever calculations we want. We can do whatever we'd like here. But what shows up on the page is this return at the very end. And another thing to keep in mind is every single time that you set state, it re-renders. The page will re-render. Like all the components that you set the state on are going to re-render, which is why I'm able to why why I'm able to like sh like see on a different icon every single time that I click because it's resetting the state and it's re-rendering the entire component. So like in um, Ruby, if you try to initialize or if you try to um, do like a dot new mm -hmm. on an object, mm -hmm. but if you have an initialized prop or, or whatever you call it. Parameter? Parameter. Sure. Then it, it would blow up. But here, you're able to call handle click without initializing an app because you're calling from mute button, and it and it and it's it reads it as that there is a prop. Yeah. So the question was like, when you do things inside of Ruby, and let's say you have like a let's, let's just for the sake of let's just do Rails. Okay. So we have class person. Definitionalize name address. Okay. If I do p equals person dot new with John seventy three West Monroe and anything else, this would blow up because it's expecting three things, but expecting two things, but you gave it three. Yeah. They're like, I, this is I'm going to blow up. This blows up. The question that you had was like, why do I not need to like specify what I guess, what was the question again? When you call handle click before you assign it anything, how is that not blowing up? In this file or this file? On the left file. On the left file? Yeah. <clears throat> so mute button, I'm passing in two parameters. The name of the parameter, the first parameter is is muted. Yeah. The name of the second parameter is called handle click. I'm not passing it in, to be used inside of app.js. I'm actually passing it to be used inside of mute button. So you can kind of see there is an is muted under props that we use here. And then there is a handle click being passed down from over here that's also being used under this.props.handle click. Yeah. So the idea is when I actually click this on icon, it's going to just execute this.props.handle click. 
doesn't live here on this level, but it goes up to this level, which is basically saying, okay, whenever handle click is fired off, and I'm actually saying, I want you to do this dot toggle mute, which is the set resetting of state. I mean, I, I know how they, how both of them communicate. Mm -hmm. It was just, uh, I'm surprised that it didn't blow up before it even got to a mute button. Oh, you mean like why? Oh, this is this is just a name of a parameter. Again, I can call this wherever I want. Yeah. It's, it's being passed down as a bunch of key value pairs. So I mean, it is would muted. You, would you be able to call like poop two, and it won't blow up. Like this. A uh, third parameter. Oh yeah. Or whatever you want. String or. That. I have no idea. Sure. Let's see if I, I actually am curious if this is going to show <laughs> up. Um, let's put a let's just do this dot props dot group two. Yeah. So you can pass as many parameters down from one app, one one component to another component. Whether or not you're going to use it is something different. So I, I literally just created a random uh, a random parameter, a random prop called poop2, and I set it equal to a string called anything. And because it's, this is going to execute at this point because it's the off icon. That's where we, that's where we start. And you can kind of see it does show up on the page. I have that off icon, and the word anything just shows up. I have a question about why the one react. Uh, oh, you mean this? Like, why why does one say it, class app extends component, and why does the other one say class mute button extends react dot component? It's the same thing. I can just highlight this whole thing, and I'm pretty sure this this will also work. Let's find out. Yeah, same thing. Uh, oh no, what happened? Oh, I changed it from handle click to poop. And then I have one other question on like, you have the if statements inside of render. Is there like any kind of um, convention where you should try to keep your code outside of render or is that just whatever's necessary at the time? So it's kind of like, if you think back to MVC and you had uh, like Ruby on Rails stuff, right? You want it as little logic to happen in the view as possible. You want most of the calculations to be handled elsewhere. But there are certain things you cannot avoid. If else kind of logic for views is going to end up in the views. So the question was, can like, is there a best practice where I can, like, should I be doing the if, if check inside of here? And for this one, I don't see another way of doing it. Like there's nowhere else for this. You can kind of think of the render as the view. There's nowhere else for this to go. It needs to know what I'm going to display based on the data that's already there. So again, you have a render. It's what shows up to the page. And every single render has a return. You can do whatever you want outside of the return. But inside the return, you have to have all of the logic already done. So I have, like, inside this render, I have an if check. So this is all the logic. It executes this particular code. If this evaluates to true, then I'm going to just return this out to the screen. Like this is this stuff right here is what's actually showing up on the screen. You can do as many calculations as you want outside the return, but once the return hits, it's just I'm not doing any more calculations. I'm just showing stuff on the screen. Let me stop recording. <laughs>